The Rebel Capitalist Show. So give me your thoughts on what's happening in the energy space. I mean, my goodness gracious, the last six months has been just incredible, isn't it? And just give me your ideas. Yeah. And so, well, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, we saw, you know, big spike up in oil, um, you know, at the beginning of the Russian Ukraine invasion, right? All, all of that basically risk premium has been taken out of the market, which is a good thing. That was too much too, too soon. Um, and right now we're kind of sitting at, you know, we're kind of coming off a little bit. I think the SPR really is um, starting to impact the, uh, at least the WTI, the U.S. domestic market. Do you want to go into that just, just a little bit so the viewers understand the strategic petroleum reserves, I think what you're referring to. What Biden's done is he's taken that and sold it out into the market to try to reduce the, the gas prices, basically to buy votes. So right. how long has that been going on? Uh, what, would, what did they start with? They started last year, last fall. Um, they started in November. The first announcement was in October. Um, we had um, basically at the end of the year, there was like an 80, 80 million dollar or 80 million, 80 million barrel release. Then they announced um, a second release. So plus the 80, they added another 100. Mm -hmm. um, so it was 180. And then just now, um, a couple of weeks ago, they released, they announced another 20. So it'll be 200 total. Um, which literally places us in danger, danger, danger zone. Why is um, that? Because well, the, the, the reserve was created in the 1970s after the oil embargo and the energy crisis then, so that we would never have to be in that position again. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing is, is that high oil prices, high gasoline prices, it's, that's not a crisis. The crisis is when we're actually in gas line. So, you know, my feeling is, is that, you know, you know, I've been very outspoken against this SPR release because literally we're not in an emergency. You know, when we're Europe, <laughs> that's when we're, you know, going to be an emergency. And so the problem is, is that right now the U.S. mostly produces light sweet crude. We do produce some sour crude, but not that much. So what we've been releasing is sour crude so that we can mix it and uh, blend it and make the distillates and things that we need. But right. And, and but that's what we mostly import from other countries. So the problem is, is that when we have a problem. We've taken all of that out of the market. In fact, for the very first time, sour crude is actually lower than sweet crude in, in the SPR. So it's getting very worrisome because, you know, again, when we have an energy crisis and, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying what's happening in Europe is going to happen in the U.S., but, you know, it's very possible that we could see that, you know, 23, 24, depending on how things are. So I just think it's, irresponsible, you know, just because to bring, you know, release 200 million barrels to bring down gas prices, 83 cents is <laughs> yeah. Yeah. a little the bit insane. Benefit analysis really doesn't make sense. But I mean, I, go into that a little bit further, what you were saying with the, the, the sour, the sweet, uh, because I was talking to Townsend re regarding this uh, maybe a couple weeks ago, and uh, he was saying effectively that it's kind of a fallacy that the United States can be energy self-sufficient when you look at oil, because although we may produce a lot of oil here, we have to mix it with things that we have to import for it to actually be usable. And I don't think most people get that. What they were calling energy independence really was being a net exporter, not that you're not importing anything. So right, right. Um, that's their definition of being energy independent, but it's not technically independent. I mean, there's global oil flows. Everybody's trading oil with somebody else because it, they make something that they don't make. So, you know, we're still importing a lot of oil. We had to because we don't produce you know, the kinds of oil that we need to refine because we need distillate products here as well. Um, so still, it's, uh, you're talking about diesel. That's kind of the fallacy, which I've always kind of pushed back on is, you know, energy independence is just by their definition and that exporter. So as far as uh, prices, I've, I've noticed recently oil, I mean, we got up to 
I think this is what you're talking about, the risk premium up to what, 130 or something like that. And then we kind of drifted back down to the low hundreds and into the 90s. And then yeah. recently we've been uh, down, I think, what, 87, 88, something like that. Yeah, we're about 87, 88 right now. Yeah. Um, so do you think that the decrease in price is just the the Russian risk premium going away? Or does it also have a lot to do with the market predicting lower aggregate demand moving forward? Well, I think it's a lot of things. I mean, I think it's recession fears, right? And yeah. global global recession fears. I would push back on that and say demand is really relatively inelastic. Okay. So, you know, because if we look at the great financial crisis, like 2008, right? We were producing about, I don't know, our, we were consuming about 85.8 million barrels at the time. Then we saw 2009, our consumption only dropped by a million and a half barrels a day. And by 2010, we were already back up higher than 2008 levels. Okay. So, you know, demand is kind of relatively inelastic, even though, you know, we were still in the midst of, you know, a financial crisis during that time. I think it's recession fears, first of all, but I would push back and say demand is relatively inelastic during those times. I think it's risk premium taken out of the market. Obviously, um, with Russian, there's a lot more Russian oil on the market than they originally thought. The original estimates were between like three and four million. We're really just not seeing that because um, you have buyers in, um, you know, you have China, India, UAE, buyers in Africa, buyers in South America that are kind of, that don't have sanctions against Russia that are taking up those extra barrels at this point. 